Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is essentially part 2 of my autopilot guide and tips for new players or for newbies to flight simulation or returning players who are new to the autopilot. In this video I'm going to be showing you another tip on how to get you to your assigned altitude. It's actually the preferable way I do it using flight level change. I'm also going to be talking to you about the big thing that a lot of people want to know about is how to set up an ILS approach to your destination airport and how can you get your aircraft to land in autopilot. Not something I'd recommend in real life, but I'm going to show you how you can do that in this video. So let's get on with it. I'm set up in the Cessna 172 at our destination airport, obviously Gatwick. Let's get straight in the cockpit and get straight on with this because I've got quite a lot to cover. It's essential you go and look at part one if you've not seen it and you're new to autopilot, new to flight simulation. That covers a lot of the basic autopilot procedures that you're going to need if you want to follow this part as well. In the last video, I showed you how to set an altitude. And then you switch on the autopilot computer. Remember, engage autopilot is just like switching on a computer. It's not going to do anything by itself until you instruct it further. But if you click that on when you're in flight, not on the ground, that will just turn on the computer. And I showed you last time to get to your altitude, you would set an altitude, which is here. Go and look at part one to refresh your memory. That's the autopilot altitude you want the autopilot to climb at. And then I showed you that you would press vertical speed. I'm not going to do it now, but you would increase vertical speed to climb or decrease it to descend, depending on what altitude you wanted to get to. In this video, I'm going to show you a different way of climbing, which is my preferred way, which is called FLC mode or flight level change mode. So we can turn that on on the ground. It's not going to affect anything. And you'll get a blue number here. Now you can increase that number or decrease it. Increase selected airspeed. And what this does, I'll take it up to 75, which is your standard rate climb coming out of an airport or taking off. You want to climb at around 75 knots. What the autopilot will do once I turn it on in the air is maintain that 75 knots speed here. And it will pitch or descend, depending whether you're climbing or descending, to maintain that speed. So it will nose up, the aircraft will nose up or nose down, and your vertical speed will be dependent on what speed you've set here. What speed you would like the aircraft to maintain whilst it's climbing to 3000 feet. So you're not increasing vertical speed or decreasing it in this case. You're letting the autopilot decide what vertical speed it needs to go at to maintain that 75 knot climb. This will make sense once we get going. Let me just show you this in practice. We'll go full throttle, release the parking brake. Soon as I take off and clear the runway, I'm just going to hit autopilot because I've got flight level change on. So it's all set up. You can set that up on the ground, which is why it's my preferred way of doing this. Get to around 60, which would be okay there. I'll just clear the runway, which I have done. Press autopilot, leave go of my controls. The aircraft is now climbing. Let's move down the screen. It's trying to maintain that 75 knot climb or speed. And it's pitching to maintain the speed, as you can see, around 75 knots there. It's trying to get it to 75 knots. So you're, it's climbing in a profile or vertical speed profile or speed 
that's maintaining the speed, if that makes sense. If you were to do this manually, if you were to try and hold your flight controller to maintain 75 knots, the vertical speed will be roughly the same at this power setting, at full power. Because the nose of the aircraft is angled to such an extent that it's trying to keep that 75 knot speed profile. It's the best way I can explain it to you. I hope that makes sense. As you can see, the autopilot's doing an admirable job. A good job of trying to keep roughly that 75 knot speed. And uh, our vertical speed is around 8, 900, so it's quite fast. We're going to get to that 3,000 in no time at all. So that's tip number one. That will continue when it reaches 3,000. Let's come down and lower that so it's 2,000. And then you'll see what happens. The aircraft will level out. You'll then have to watch your throttle so you don't over RPM. I'll show you that tip in a moment too. Let this just get to its 2000 assigned altitude which we set up before. You can see it's blinking now so it's coming near to that 2000 which is there. Now the aircraft's nosing down a little because now it wants to get into a, a level flight where it's not raising, uh, climbing or descending. And the autopilot would do that. We've not clicked on uh, heading or nav mode. I do have a little uh, flight plan in here. I'll come to that in a moment. We've not clicked on nav mode yet. We could do, in fact. And it will follow our flight plan. I showed you that in video one. This is what I want to show you. Now, I'm at full throttle. I'm over revving the, the engine of the aircraft. So I'm going to throttle back about a sixth, roughly. And that stops that flashing and it keeps it happy and we're not going to over speed. So you can see we're at our 2000 assigned altitude, more or less, and it's coming onto our flight plan. That's tip one. Let me now show you how we can set up an ILS and let the aircraft land you if that's your desire. Let's first jump to a simple flight plan. Okay, so from the main menu, obviously we want to go to world map. If you're going to follow this, centre yourself over the south of the UK and find Gatwick Airport, which is here. Left click, you probably are not know how to do this, but I'm just going to show you anyway. Left click, set as departure, that's where we're departing from. It will always depart us to the west, flying out to the west, which is good. And our arrival airport, zoom in on this big cluster. And you should see, let's move the map up, London City Airport. Left click, set as arrival. Very straightforward. You probably all know how to do that, hopefully. I don't just want to fly in a straight line, so I'm going to use uh, Kew Gardens as a waypoint. Left click there on Kew Gardens and just press, just go down to add. And it will add a waypoint. So we'll fly to Kew Gardens first, then come to London City Airport to land. Let's go fly. Okay, so at Gatwick Airport, if you follow my steps, you should see that line on your right screen there. That's our flight plan. Let's go down. Let's do that flight level change trick again. I want to climb, and there's a reason for this, to 2000. I'm going to use the altitude knob and mouse up. So that figure there shows 2000, what we want our autopilot to climb at. Click on flight level change. And again, I'm going to click that up to... You can click quicker to get there. 75 knots to hold 75 knots in the climb. So that's all set up. Let's not mess around here. Procrastinate. Let's just throttle up and take off. And what we'll do, we'll hit autopilot and nav, so it will follow our flight plan and climb at that 75 knot profile. As you can see, that flight level climb is quite handy. You can just click aut autopilot once you've set it up. Find it a lot easier and a lot better. Let's take off the clear the runway, click autopilot. I'll move down to that screen to click on nav. So it's climbing us in our... Well, it's going to get to our 75 knot climb profile and bring us on our course. Let's just watch this a little while it just settles down. 
Yep, all's going well. Okay, so it's climbing and it's getting us on course. I'm going to move to that second screen where we've got that map view. Now, I've covered this in another video. This is setting up an ILS approach. I'm going to do it again here, and this time I'm going to make it as newbie-friendly as I can. It's not straightforward, so keep in mind, an ILS approach, basically, let's zoom out the map. Mouse up to zoom out on that adjust map. Make sure you've got that semicircle adjust map zoom there. An ILS approach will bring us, will add to your flight plan an approach path into London City. Typically, planes land towards the west, coming in sort of 20, is it 27 or something? I think it's 27, 26, 27. So coming in this way, not that way. Because basically planes are taking off that way, so you don't want planes landing this way. So what this will do, once I set this up, it will add a little extra waypoint. So it will bring us in on a, an approach and glide scope approach to our airport. I'll show you how to do this. To do this, click on the procedures button to your right here on this second screen. Where it's got select approach, move down to enter key there to accept that. We don't want runway 9, ILS 9, we want runway ILS 27. So I'm going to press enter again here to enter into this menu. Use this wheel here, navigate MFD, which is this here. Let me just throttle back, I'm over revving, that's better. Uh, use this knob here to go down to 27, ILS 27, or actually mouse up to get down to ILS 27, press enter again, and it's now accepted that we want an ILS 27 approach inputted into our flight plan. To get that flashing again, which you'll need, just click on the outer knob where you've got that hand toggle selection cursor left click that will make it flash again use this knob mouse up no mouse down <laughs> where you've got that navigate MFD make sure it's showing that N mouse down so you get to load we want to load what we've just put in there ILS 27 into our flight plan just press enter there Now you can see it's added a couple of squiggly lines. Let's take a closer look at that. I want to navigate I want to navigate the map to this part and zoom in. So left click the range button. Make sure you've got toggle map pointer showing there. Then just press left click. You've got a flashing cursor on screen. Now you can navigate, you can see there. Just go above or below that knob and you'll see an arrow, pan map, left, right, up, down. I want to pan up, so I'm going to hold my left mouse button. You can see the cursor on screen is moving. I want to pan to the right. Because I want to take a closer look at what the autopilot has just inputted into our flight plan. Mouse up where you got a just map zoom. Make sure you got your mouse so it's showing that. Uh, mouse down, rather. And you can see what it's going to do. It's going to fly us around here. It's going to take us up here, around here, down here, and then on this approach to the glide path to bring us into a landing in London City Airport. One thing I did say to you at the beginning of this flight is that I wanted a flight level of 2,000 feet. That's because, let me just bring up a chart on screen. Now I found this chart by typing into Google uh, London City Airport ILS 27, 27 ILS chart. I typed that into Google and I found this map image. It's the bottom part of that map where you can see I've circled the 2000 and a little bit to the left there I've circled where it will meet the glide scope <laughs> I've said it again glide slope 
I'm not an aficionado with charts. I used to be better at them. I used to use them a lot in the early days of Flight Sim, and I don't use them too much now, but I know the bottom half of an approach chart shows you what height and altitude you want to come in at so you can intercept the glide slope and land your aircraft successfully so i know this 2000 works for this it's going to be different for each chart they're all going to look slightly different but generally look at the bottom half of the chart and you can see the numbers have circled and the points have circled. It's quite obvious that 2000 is going to bring us or intercept the glide slope at London City Airport. So there you go. So the aircrafts, let's click on toggle map pointer to reset our view of where the aircraft is currently. The aircraft is going to continue on its way until it gets round here. I won't let you sit through all this. It's got quite a distance to go. I'll come back when we're nearing to our approach and glide slope approach. Okay, we're making good progress on our flight plan. As you can see, we're on this part. We've just got to come around here to London City Airport. Wanted to come back to show you a couple of things. The view of London City moved away from it now but it looks spectacular at one point some of these views you get on this flight plan are just absolutely lovely you get a better view coming into london city airport in fact once it takes us around another thing i should mention i talked about the ils frequencies and the autopilot locking onto them by going to procedures select approach some disused runways and grass strips runways don't have an ILS frequency or anything similar for the autopilot to lock onto. So it won't work for some runways. The majority of commercial airports, London City, Gatwick, airports in Italy, France, Germany, America, Australia, Spain, etc etc will have ILS approaches so you can go to procedures and select your ILS approach just keep in mind some airports around the world just don't have frequencies so you can't set up an approach you just have to set up a route take a note of which way the runway is running and land manually just something to keep in mind another thing I'll mention let's just see where we are we're fine is the glide slope some of you will probably probably be thinking what on earth is a glide slope once we get on an, an approach so on this line here coming into london city airport you'll see a little g pop up here i'll show you later and you'll see a little green diamond start to move down here what that does is guide your aircraft on a, an angle to land on the runway so ideally you want to keep that green diamond, I'll show you later, in the center. And it means you're at the right angle and right approach. The perfect approach for a perfect landing, essentially. I'll show you that later and I'll actually show you the autopilot taking control of that. Let's continue. Okay, we're well along on our course. You can see that beautiful sight of London City there. All the famous landmarks in the Thames. London City Airport ahead of us. But we've got to fly over it, fly around to come on approach to 27, ILS 27. So basically we'll be flying over it just about any, any moment now, doing a few turns to turn back to come on an approach to runway 27 which is going roughly that way wonderful look at the scenery and sights you get on this route though I, I think it's just brilliant one thing I'll mention while we're here you can see our current speed oh, keep getting distracted uh, current speed is 112 113 knots in the Cessna aircraft, at least, the autopilot's controlling our altitude, 
That's fine, it's following our flight plan, it's guiding us along, bringing us back on the approach to runway 27. It's not controlling our speed. You would have to do this yourself, or I would have to do this myself manually. Otherwise, we'll be coming in to an approach to the airport at 113 knots, which is twice the speed we want to be going, coming in for a landing. So in a moment, there's the airport, there's London City ahead there, the L2, and uh, it never gets boring. Never gets boring to me. It's the most realistic replica of London I've seen in a flight simulator. Absolutely incredible. Let's zoom in, let's get down to that second screen. Gonna mouse down to increase the range. As you can see, we're gonna come to this point and turn. Once we do, I'm gonna go about half throttle to get us under a hundred knots, which is fine in the Cessna 172 to go to flaps one. Get us under a hundred knots, get to flaps one, keep adjusting our speed so there we are we're turning now adjusting our speed to get to around 70 to come into a, and a landing at London City Airport so once we finish this turn onto this part of our flight plan that will do once it straightens up I'm gonna go half throttle you can hear the change in the engine. Speed is coming down nicely. It's fine. We can go to stage one flaps now. Stage one flaps. First stage of flaps. Speed will continue to come down. And roughly half throttle is fine at flaps 1 to get us down to around 70-ish. So important now, don't forget about your speed on this part of your flight plan as we're approaching the approach to the airport. Once we get the glide slope, once we get to this point here, we'll see a little G come up here. Once that turns green, I'm going to press this button which is fourth down on the left of this panel it's actually here as well but I'll do it on the first G1000 once we get the G come up I'll press that and it will capture the glide slope which means it will guide us down at an angle for a landing I'll show you that magic when that happens there you go you can see our speed is coming down now what's 77 that's doing nicely Want to at least get to an ideal stage of flaps to full flaps at around 70 knots. I can go second stage of flaps there now. Don't worry about any flares because the altitude is being controlled by the autopilot so you don't need to adjust here. Just go to stage 2 and keep your speed around 70-ish. 65 to 70 just going to increase throttle a little so we don't go too low if you go below 65 certainly increase your speed to get it back up to around 65 to 70 ideal for a landing you don't want to go too low on the speed otherwise you'll get stall warnings and your aircraft doesn't have enough power or revs to keep you in the air so you'll be in a very serious situation so that's fine, that's all we need to do for now. That configuration is enough for a landing. I might go to the last stage, stage 3 of flaps, in a moment. But I'm just keeping an eye on my speed, I don't want it to go any lower really. So I'm just small adjustments to the throttle, tiny adjustments just to keep the speed constant. That's fine. We'll be turning again, and before you know it, we'll be seeing a little G come up here. 
You'll see the G come up to warn you the glide, sl glide slope is approaching. The, that G will turn green and you'll see up here GS for glide slope as well. I'm trying to keep this as simple as I can get it. There you go. There's the G. We're turning now on our last leg. It's not green yet, so I'm not going to press approach. Once it is green, and that diamond turns solid, I'll press the approach button, which will come up on our last turn. And I'm going to do something that you should never do in real life. You can do it in a simulator, but I'm going to let the autopilot land the aircraft. And I'll show you why it will bring us down, and it will land it, but I'll show you why. You should never let this happen in real life, certainly. But for those who want to see it, you can actually let the autopilot land you. Land you. Let's take a look around. Yep, we'll be turning back onto... Which way will we turn uh, right? We will be turning right back towards London City. There's the London City Airport there to land here. Exciting stuff. So no panic. I'm going to keep it in that configuration because my speed's nice. I've got enough flaps to land. This is more about the autopilot rather than perfecting your skills. And do keep in mind it's a simulator. And it's your simulator. You do it with it what you want. I'm going to start turning right any second. You'll see that G turn green and that diamond becomes solid which it has, I can now click on my approach. I'm going to wait. I can click my approach button now and it will keep us on that glide slope. Once it gets to the centre, it will follow it down to the runway. Let the aircraft turn towards London City Airport, which is a wonderful view. Now I'm going to click on my approach button. Arm approach. Turn approach mode on. It's on. You've got GS there, it's going to follow the glide slope. I believe we're below it at the moment. So once we get, which is what I showed you on the chart, we're going to intercept the glide slope. Once that green diamond comes down, you'll see it start moving down to the centre. The autopilot will keep it in the centre and take us down for a landing not the most perfect landing I've got to say but you'll see in a minute it does work any second nice outside view Let's get back inside because I want to see that green diamond start moving down once we get once we start uh, intercepting the glide slope. And this should work effectively for any airport, any runway that has ILS or similar frequencies. You can set up like I showed you before, get it on the glide slope and effectively let the autopilot land you. Green diamond's moving down. Watch what happens once it gets to the centre. I'm not touching any controls. I might have to alter the throttle once it starts descending because we don't want to overspeed. Actually, I might just go last stage of flaps. There you go, the autopilot's following the glide slope keeping that diamond in the centre and taking us down on our runway. You can see now our speed is increasing. Full stage of flaps. I'm just going to decrease the throttle 
Don't worry about that flashing now because it's locked onto the glide slope. Don't worry about that flashing number. Uh, altitude of 2000 doesn't mean anything to us now. Let's lower that speed. Get it back down to around 70. Not too much so that you start stalling. So just keep an eye on it. There we go. It's coming down nicely. 65 to 70 knots is fine. And I'm going to let the autopilot land us. Which I never do. <laughs> Even in simulators. I'm just showing you it's possible. Just keeping an eye on that speed. I don't want it to go below 65. So I'm just going to nudge it up a little bit. There we go. That'll do. Full flaps. Speed's good. Just keep an eye on it. Small adjustments to the throttle there. It's a little bit complex, everything I've shown you, but there's no other way. It's not straightforward, but hopefully I've explained it well enough so that you can follow what I'm doing. Hands off the controls completely. It would be roughly around now I would disengage autopilot. I'm not going to do it now, but I'll click the autopilot off and take control myself. Once we get over the runway threshold, so around here, I'm going to null the throttle. And typically you would float the aircraft. The autopilot doesn't know how to float, or it doesn't float the aircraft. It just plumps you on the runway. Just be aware of that. So when you get over the threshold, roughly there, I've just taken my throttle full back. I'm effectively trying to stall the aircraft. Now I would float. The, air, the autopilot is going to bump you down for a bumpy landing but it's landed you in real life oh doesn't like that maybe my undercarriage is no it's okay yep didn't like that at all i think the undercarriage may be slightly damaged let's pop outside maybe i do have crash damage on anyway we landed i guess if i was a little bit more ready with my rudder there i could have kept it straight never mind we've landed and the autopilot's landed us let me know your thoughts and feedback, please, once again on this video. Has it been helpful to you? Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if it has. I may do further series in the autopilot, maybe in different aircraft. Leave your suggestions down below again. Often I'll make videos on people's suggestions if they're popular enough. Let me know your thoughts, give the video a like. Subscribe for more and I'll see you soon.